Hi, my name is Melissa Lee. I'm with the West Valley Homeschool Foundation. And this is a curriculum show and tell on Timberdoodle. It is one in a series that we are doing. We wanted to have a regular curriculum fair this spring. It's not the kind where vendors come in and try to sell you stuff, but we were going to have a bunch of families from our homeschool group set up a table and show off the curricula that they love and they wanna to show to other people. We thought it would be really helpful instead of having, um, you know, viewing things on a website or talking to a vendor, talk to actual real life people in your community who are using these things. And you can ask them questions, and flip through their guides and everything else. Obviously we couldn't do that. So we decided to do a series of live online events doing the exact same thing, people showing off the curricula that they like and people being able to ask questions. Um, so that's what we are doing here. And with that, I am going to turn it over. Hi, um, I am very excited about Timberdoodle. So thank you, Melissa, for letting me come and do this. <laughs> um, I will tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Cam. Um, I have six boys. I have, um, I have been a teacher for since 1990. Um, I became a reading specialist later on, and um, then I have six boys, two biological and four special needs foster adopt. I've done everything from uh, public school, charter school, uh, private school, and homeschool between the boys, and so we have experience across the uh, the uh, across the span. So. Um, when we started homeschooling, um, I was homeschooling my youngest three, and we started off with sunlight, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with sunlight, and it was great for kindergarten, first and second grade, I think it was, and then we tapped out because it was just too hard and not enough hands-on. Um, I loved the reading as a reading teacher, that was my love, but my kids um, didn't love it quite as much, <laughs> and so I went on a hunt for finding what would work for us and for a variety of needs in my house and a variety of grade levels and all the things happening that happen in a lot of um, homeschool houses. And I found Timberdoodle and Timberdoodle is phenomenal. What they did is it is a family that started a company um, and they go through and literally every year you'll see different things and um, on their website. They change it up according to, um, they listen very closely to what families say. So if you don't like something and why, or if you love it, they love the feedback and they take that feedback and they use it to create their curriculum for the next year. Um, they offer unique and innovative homeschool items. Um, they put a special emphasis on engineering, hands-on type stuff, higher level thinking skills, um, in a very unique and creative way. So it speaks to a lot of kids, whether you need, your, your kid is exceptional and needs more, or if the kid, you have a child who might be struggling in certain areas, um, it meets the needs of both ends. And I think that's what's really unique that not all curriculums can really do that. And then it adds a huge hands-on component, which I'll show you when I walk around my room because I have stuff set up around me. Um, a couple of things that were huge is uh, they sell both uh, Christian, which they call their classic selection, and they also sell a non-religious or secular version, which is awesome for families. It meets if you want, you know, you want Christian curriculum, they have a homeschool fourth grade packet for uh, Christian. They have the homeschool for non, non-religious. So they, they have literally every type of thing that could meet whatever family's needs. Um, they also, this is huge. They allow you to custom fit a curriculum to fit your child or your family. Um, so literally, um, and I'll show you when I go around, is I have, um, right now I'm homeschooling my 13 year old and my almost 12 year old. Um, they are by grade in a school, they would be going into eighth grade and seventh grade. Um, real life, we are a lot closer to third grade, fourth grade, maybe a little fifth grade here and there, um, some second grade thrown in there depending on what subject. So that's a huge span, and I have to figure out how to best meet their needs. So when we found Timberdoodle, after we had done Sunlight, we finished second grade, 
I went back, saw Timberdoodle after looking at a million different curriculums and I went, oh, this is it. And we literally started at kindergarten for my kids who were at that point, I don't know, fourth grade and third grade, I think something like that, maybe fifth grade, fourth grade. Um, so we started with Timberdoodle and we started with kindergarten and then I called them and I'm like, okay, but I need some higher level here. And some of these things are too high. What can you do? And he's like, oh no, we can help you. And they literally on their computer, when you go on, they have everything broken up by subject. They have it broken up by grade level. They have all kinds of things. So if you want a, an elite curriculum, which has everything where you have a basic curriculum, like you can, when you go on their website, it's overwhelming sometimes, but you can say you pick the elite curriculum and you say, okay, this is, I like all of this, but math is way too high. What can I do for math? Then he, they, they have a math section of every math item that they, that they have available and you can pick out a math item for a math item. So you can change grade levels, you can change a publisher that they offer, you can change all kinds of things. So like right now we're using Math UC, it is working extremely well, but they also, I could switch that out and I could get te teaching textbooks which we might at some point. So if I think, oh, teaching textbooks works better for me than Matthew C., you can just trade them out and they will allow you to do it and you can pick the grade level that you want. So for us, it has been huge because I can literally make my curriculum um, according to what my kids' needs are. And then if there's something that, oh, I really like that, but it's just a little bit too high, I think next year, I just keep a list and say, I really like this from the fourth grade curriculum but I traded it out for something in third grade curriculum. And then next year, this is what I wanna put in. And I keep myself a running list so that I know what I want for the next year or something that I saw. Um, it, it's phenomenal. So they also, when they do it, this is the Timberdoodle uh, catalog. This is this year's. Um, you can go to their website. It's simple. It's just www.timberdoodle.com. You can go to their website. They have a place you can order a catalog. They'll send you a catalog really quickly. I like the catalog because the kids and I, as we've got pages turned down, they, it's broken up by both grade level. And so they have like an eighth grade kit and it literally will show you everything that's in the eighth grade kits. Um, and it'll tell you what they have. And then it has you know, you have your preschool kit, they have preschool kits that are phenomenal. They have your, here's a second grade kit and it'll show you everything that's in it. It has the picture and the writing, which is great. But then at the back, it breaks it down by, I'm looking. So this is science. So it'll say, here's science. And it will literally, I know it's backwards for all of you. It'll literally show you each item that they sell in science and a full description of what it is. So if there's something in the grade level in science, you're like, eh, I don't really like this. You can go and pick another item and swap them out. So that's huge. Um, they also send you a curriculum handbook. So this is the one that's going to be for this coming year for my kids because we're going to do fifth grade this next year um and in it it tells you everything i'm trying to trying to it tells you it has like an annual planner that kind of breaks down if you want to do everything in the curriculum that there is it'll break down how many pages a week and how much of every single thing in it to do for the year in order to finish it within a normal school year um, which is awesome. And then of course it has all the typical how to do things for that is separate from any of the teacher guides. They give you weekly checklists that you can copy that your kids can then check off what they did. And it's broken up into how much to do each week. Your kids can check off. Oh, I did that today. I did that today. You just copy them if you have more than one kid or they can do it right in the book. They also send you a link, which is phenomenal on the computer to these checklists that say you want to go year round or you changed one item out and it's no longer in your curriculum and you added a different one, they send you a link. You can customize this on the computer and still have the exact same thing. And you can put in how many days you're going to do school for the year, how many weeks. If you only want to do four days a week, it will customize what you need to do each day in order to finish, which is kind of a fun little, 
Um, and then it tells you how to do, it gives you reading challenges if you want to add extra stuff. It gives you, if you have a light reader, it gives you ideas for books that will go with the curriculum for the whole year to read. If you have um, an avid reader, it gives you even more books that go with the curriculum for the year. Then the committed reader, which keeps going <laughs> and even gets more books. So they kind of meet, oh, and the obsessed reader. I forgot about that. We never even get that far. So it never even, um, you have so many ways that you can customize it for your child, whether you need more or you need less or you're a big reading family or you're not, you can pick and choose what works for you. And then they go by each item that's in your curriculum and kind of gives you an overview of how to use it for your, for your student and how it goes together, um, all together as a curriculum. So they send you one of those that's customizable on the computer. And then they also, with each curriculum, and I know I've seen this question pop up in the West Valley Homeschool Group several times, is about testing. I want to test my student. I want year-end testing. I want to know how, you know, are they at grade level? So with every curriculum and every grade level, they send you um, a test prep. So it will cover, so this is the fifth grade for next year. I think our fourth grade one, yeah, our fourth grade one for this year is right here. Um, and basically it is, um, it meets the current state standards and it is just like your typical test. It's your fill in blank and it covers all the subjects so that you have an idea of where your child is placing at the end of that school year, if you want to. Um, sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. <laughs> um, but they give it to you. If you don't want it, you can take it off and not pay for it. But it's a great resource I have to buy because I know some people are on ESA, other people are not, we're ESA. So we have to buy the entire curriculum when we do a curriculum and it's actually cheaper because Timberdoodle does significant discounts when you do a full curriculum um, whether you do the regular curriculum or the elite which adds in like all kinds of arts and crafts and more hands-on type stuff um, it they they knock off a pretty significant chunk of money so if you take off only one or two things it actually is cheaper to still buy the whole curriculum than it is to take off just a couple of things the other thing I'd mention is right now, um, I heard this, and I, said, I heard that homeschool curriculum is the new toilet paper. Um, and I know that's true as far as Timberdoodle because we still have stuff on order that was supposed to come and they keep sending us an email. We are so sorry, but with everybody looking for curriculum and homeschool supplies right now, um, and with a lot of the shutdowns, it has been, it's getting harder to find. So you definitely want to look at ordering sooner rather than later because things are back ordered. Um, and then there's shipping delays. But if you order in April, say you're coming around or you're seeing this next February, in April, Timberdoodle does an awesome thing. Not only do they discount their packages for the coming year, but they also throw in 50 and $100 gift cards to use towards um, other items that you might want. So um, when you buy the curriculum, depending on the price that you pay, then they will throw in a $50 gift card or a $100 gift card. So what I use with those is, because I have two kids, I buy the extra workbooks or the extra things. You also get Timberdoodle points, just on the side, and you get so many points, and those are like bucks, Timberdoodle bucks that you can use to buy things. So I buy extra arts, craft supplies that aren't covered under normal, um, ESA funds or things that we want because we'll buy things that are, you know, not ESA covered, obviously. And I'll use those first before I'll use my own credit cards, obviously. Um, so there's just a lot of bonuses when you buy their stuff that just in, it's a nice, when you buy in April, you get a little extra for your money. So that is kind of all of that. And then what I want to do is I'm going to get up. I'm going to try not to make you seasick. And I want to show you kind of what we did. If you go onto the computer, and I'm gonna show you a fourth grade and a fifth grade because I have what we're finishing up this year. And then what I just pulled out, I decided when I found out I was doing this, I didn't unpack the curriculum that showed up. So I unpacked it this morning <laughs> so that it's on the table, ready to be put away. Um, so I'm gonna show you what we have left. We're missing a few subjects because we finished already. So 
Um, we're missing some of it from fourth grade and we're missing science for fifth grade because it's still on back order. But you'll kind of get an idea, but if you look at what's online for fourth grade, um, and you look at what's online for fifth grade, you'll notice some of my items are different. Um, I used fourth grade this year as the base, but then I did a lot of swapping out. Um, and then I did the same thing for fifth grade for next year. So you'll, you'll see that there's some things that I kept the integrity of it. And then other things I'm like, we need a different math. We need a different spelling or reading or whatever. So kind of hold this around. Whoops, put my hand right over the camera. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I think that, no, that's upside down to you. We'll try it this way. Okay, can you see still, or is that not gonna work? I think it works. Work. Okay, so this is, I'm gonna do it this way. This is the step, there. Nope, darn it. I had this for this morning. All right, so what I did is I've got the timber doodle fourth grade stuff that I showed you. So over here is art stuff. So they have these great Aaron's putty kits that they send with almost every curriculum. My kids had a make your own comics, which just really helps. They like to draw and write, so it really helped them with their drawing and writing because they got to create their own stories. And it was in a fun way. They had these awesome pixels. So they each, we took a picture of themselves and they actually are creating a picture to hang up on their wall and it's tons of fine motor. Um, I don't know if you've seen pixels, but you take, it's kind of like a light bright. So they had that for arts and craft. We also had several painting things, but they're gone. I don't know what we did. Um, oh, and they're doing a stamp, a stamp art thing. There, they actually make their own stamps and then do engravings with it. I don't know if you can. Trying to see, nope, this way. So they make their own stamps and they actually have to use a knife. That was a little scary. We've already had a couple band-aids. Use their own knife and they cut it out. For history, most of our history, we're on the two year um, American history. So we're, this is year one of the American history. So some of the history that's left is we are finishing up our Doodle America. So they actually draw their way through the country and they have to label the states as they go. Um, they have different books that they're reading. One, and these are, they're very accurate. They're 24 hours in history, but they're done with a comic book style. So the kids love them and they're learning. So we have the Apollo landing, D-Day, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, and the same things over again, because it's the next kid, um, World War II. So we were going through and reading those with our curriculum. We also have, for writing, um, they had these daily writing. I don't know if you've ever used the six trait writing. I love them as a teacher and as a mom. Any of the six trait writing for any grade level, because they're really short, fast, um, you, it's one page per day and like, and it's usually having to do with this one was editing something and this one was diagramming out some information, but it's one skill. You're working on the same skill all week, but it's one page per day. So it's super quick, super easy, but it covers a lot of your grammar skills that are needed. Um, for our language, we are doing this and I love this. It is called Mosto or Ma Mostos. We always call it Mostos, but I don't know what it is. But it is phenomenal. This one's called Ruby. The stories, see if I can get this like this. Ah! See, this is why I should never do this. Now you're upside down. Hold on. There we go. So the, it's bright, colorful pictures. The stories are phenomenal. A lot of them are true stories. So then you have a story that you read each week, one story a week that you read, and they are, there's a teacher guide that goes with it. And then there is a, I'm gonna flip it around up here. And in here we have an in-depth thinking. So there's um, basically worksheets for each week. If you notice, these have check marks on it. My kids are not, um, they both have cerebral palsy. They have trouble coordinating pencils. 
we do it all orally. So we read the stories and then every day we do a workbook. And so they do in-depth thinking, it's full vocabulary development, um, story development, they really work on plot setting, characters, is it true, is it not, a lot of higher level thinking, um, and it throws in a lot of language skills with it. And for reading, we do Barton. So my kids are getting the reading and spelling through Barton, which is not through here. So this is what we use for our language development. And I get rid of the reading and spelling stuff out of there, out of the timber doodle, because we don't need it. And so you have that option. What was that um, last one called? Oh, Barton? Uh, no, the one before that, that you just held up the book. Oh, Mosdos. Mosdos, okay. Yeah, it's M-O-S-D-O-S, -O -S, or Mosdos is really what it probably is, but my kids have always called it Mosdos. <laughs> we would probably do the same around here. <laughs> <laughs> they named it, I just go with it. <laughs> um, as far as math, um, we have chosen right now because my kids need the hands-on to do Matthew C. So you can pick whatever Matthew C book and level that you need. If you don't want to do Matthew C, they have, they have other options for what math curriculum you want to use. And that's what I love too. You're not, you don't only have one choice for math or one choice for, for language or spelling. You have different choices. These are the ones that we're choosing. Um, because it works for us. Um, they also have these phenomenal books. They're called Building and Thinking Skills. And we did one, I think, two years ago, and then this one. Oh my goodness, they are higher level thinking. We do a page or two a day, but it's, it's stuff, everything from, this one's like word charting out, um, word choice boxes, what do they mean? They do um, geography, like where's this? So it's a combination of all the different subjects of math. Like here's diagramming, so you'll have diagramming in language. But then you'll also have, um, then they'll go into diagramming with geography. So it kind of goes back and forth between the same concepts, but in math and language reading. Um, they have logic problems. So on this next page, you have a story with a logic problem and you have to figure out which one is right. So you, you know, you've seen those logic problems in the crossword books. So it's all thinking stuff. They have to, they have to sort through the information and figure out, you know, what does the word mean or what do we have to do or how do we break it down? The best higher level thinking skills um, I've seen in a long time is in those books. Um, we also had this year, we haven't done a whole lot. My son's just been doing this on his own. One liked it, one didn't. It's a design studio. So they get to design their own superheroes and write stories to go with it. Let's see. They are huge on engineering, math, and science. So you get a lot of and higher level thinking, which I'd said. So we have things like the laser maze. This is listed, I think, as STEM on there. We, the kids will do it, they're individual. And so what I do is there's a booklet in there and I literally have each kid with a sticky note with their name so they can pick it up, they can set it up themselves, they can do it and if they get stuck, they can come and ask for help. If they don't, they can go ahead and finish it and put it away, which is awesome so that you can work with one child while they're doing one thing. Um, they have this equilibrio which is the same thing, but they look at a card, they have to build the blocks and make it balance. Um, and then they have the Clicko and the Architecto that go with it also. So you can keep going up in levels. Um, they had the marble circuit this year. So they had to build marble mazes that worked and followed the challenge. So same idea, we'd mark it to make sure that each kid made it through. They also had scratch coding. So we did scratch cards for computer, which I'm sure some of you have seen that. We have this little Edison robotic guy, and then we have the Robotics Dream level one and two. So they get to build robots and learn how to work them and make them do different things. So anybody that really likes that math, science, computer engineering, 
there is something for you. Our other favorite this year was Color Q. So it's like Sudoku, but it is with balls and um, a board. And so we would set it up in the middle of this table that you can't see anymore because it's covered in curriculum right now. We would set it up there and we would leave it out. And so each of the kids would take turns coming and doing a line or two and trying to add in the balls until we all finished it as a family. So it was kind of a fun little family idea. So that was our fourth grade. We did have science. We had Dr. Bonafide, which is an anatomy bones one. And we had something I else. I have that right here. I can show a picture of it. Okay. <laughs> I have it in my fifth grade. So she has, she has one of the younger ones for Dr. Bonafide. You have a Dr. Bonafide? Yeah, oh, I have a couple. I have the one for fifth grade here. I'm closing that because that is going to, that's going to flash too. I'm going to close because as I came to the other side of the table, the sun has moved from when I set it up and suddenly we're having... Okay, there we go. So did you hold yours up? I did, so I don't, okay. uh, here, this is book one of it. Yeah. And then um, on bones of the hand, arm, and shoulder. And so um, it's a lot of hands-on activities, mm -hmm. you know, like here is finger spelling, the alphabet, but it teaches them the bones of that part of the body and then um, activities to go along with it. Like you would trace your hand, and um, uh, draw your hand on this page and then identify the intermediate phalanges. And then yeah, my it moves on to different parts of the body. Yeah, my kids absolutely love Dr. Bonafide. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, we have the fifth grade one also for next year. And I guess it is the rib cage and the spine. So maybe by the time you get done with all of Dr. Bonafide, you have all the entire human body. <laughs> so we have the same thing. And then we also have for the fifth grade, um, Superman science, which this is fifth grade. I just unpacked it this morning, so I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna look like, but it has stuff on aerodynamics. Um, it's all pictures and I'm sure it has to do with Superman. Um, and different things, different qualities that he has. The curriculum that we're waiting on coming is anatomy, human anatomy. So that is going to be coming. Um, as far as history, I didn't have any, a lot of history over on the other side, but I have the full history here. It happens to be the, for fifth grade, it is the Charlene Notgrass. It is the America the Beautiful. I know I've heard several people have used it. It's a great curriculum with great pictures. Um, and with it comes the maps. So you'll be doing the maps and you color the different air regions of the United States so that it's kind of a hand-drawn. Um, and then you also have the timeline, which is the same thing. You can go through and fill in the timeline and color it in. Um, it has the We the People book with it which is slightly different but it um kind of goes with the same idea it kind of goes with the timeline of different events that happened within the history and it has a student workbook that goes with it um and so the workbook has um yeah it's basically a page looks like a page per lesson so this is lesson 40 and this is lesson 41 and I'm sure as with everything, um, if you need to modify it, um, it's very easily modifiable. That's what I love about this curriculum is there's not a ton of writing, there's some, and you can make it more. Um, but if you have a child who struggles with the handwriting because of either dysgraphia, or in my kid's case, they have dysgraphia and cerebral palsy, so we have hand issues all the way around, you can easily modify. Um, it also has a draw the USA, which is one of the art. It's under art, but it has it so that you can come in and draw and color again for reinforcement of all of that, which is awesome.
Then it also has some more stories, some more in depth. This is a World War II story. I, it also has geography. So you're getting geography from, um, this one's called Connecting School and Home. So same thing, it has a page a day to complete um, so that you're getting an idea of where everything fits in the world, which I love. Um, and then I don't know what this falls under, but it's called Show Me How to Survive. My kids cannot wait to get into this one um, because they really love the idea of doing all the survival. So it has how to make everything from how to make an emergency plan to it'll teach you first aid. It teaches you basic um, moves to keep a predator away like another person. Um, it has gun safety. It has everything in it. So it's kind of a fun, especially for boys. My boys are very excited about that. Um, my kids love art and craft and a lot of the curriculums, once you get past like third grade, they don't do a lot of that. Whereas Timber Doodle does. So we have some aquarium, which has, um, it's a watercolor type thing that they can do. There's also a scratch board that we got. Um, here's another watercolor painting to lessons to follow. So you get your own paper and follow the plans in here for the different, um, different things that you want to do. It shows you how to stretch your paper, how to create, gives you a step-by-step -step on how to create a different types of watercolors. And then it also has, so watercolor was the theme this year. Um, it has watercolor for young artists. So we have watercolors, pencils, and then it has some um, different, different pictures for them to make inside. So that is all of that. We have this, and I think this comes under STEM also, my crazy invention sketch, sketchbook. And in that, it is, like I'll just open it, it has transformers. First there was the cartoon, and then there was ah, a real life one. And it tells a little story, and then you have to create the rest of the story on the other side of the page. So, and you have to create something. It says your before and after to make a real life transformer. So it kind of gets them thinking, gets their creativity going in a fun way. The other thing that I love, oh, we finished these this year. Um, the critical and creative thinking activities. This is another one that I absolutely love. They have it for most of the grade levels. Um, it's kind of fun, kind of logic style stuff. So you have things at the ice cream store and they have to, you have to figure out the, the um, code for the ice cream store, the telephone number, or how many scoops someone can get. And this one is, um, he took his team out for ice cream. Each player got a double scoop and ordered a different combination of flavors. There were six flavors and he had 15 players on the team use the color key to show the 15 different combinations. So there's, um, um, what's that called? <laughs> I just went blank. Um, you know, anyway, percentages, not percentages, but anyway, I just went blank on what it's called. But any of that stuff, so any of the fun stuff, it has word problems in it, but it's all done in puzzle form. So it makes the kids um, think and have fun, but they're learning at the same time, which is always my key. And then as far as language, it's the same thing. If the, we, we ordered the Mos Dos or Mos Dos, whatever you wanna call it again. Um, and it also had 101 doodle definitions. So I'm a huge fan of anything that helps build vocabulary. So in here is, it'll give you a word, like this one says labyrinth. I know it's backwards, but it says labyrinth. It shows what a labyrinth is, and then you actually have to create your own labyrinth. So you're learning a word, and then it shows you the definitions, and then you have to create something that goes with the word to help you remember it. So I love anything that kind of helps reiterate that vocabulary. And then as far as, oh, history is still, I forgot these were over here. They also, because it's hands-on, we have a 4D cityscape puzzle. So it's a history over time puzzle. So they'll be doing that. And they also will be building, I don't know if you can see that. It is the White House. So it is, 
a brick construction set of the White House. So they will be constructing the White House as they're learning about the White House this year and everything that goes on in the White House. And then there's also games. So we have, just like we had some of the ones that they can do by themselves, we have Genius Square, Walls and Warriors, which are all strategic one player games. And then I got one that is a little bit easier. Um, I went ahead and got this one. It's called Goblet and Gobblers because these others are gonna really be hard for them. And I wanted something that would also be fun <laughs> and a little bit easier and kind of encouraging. I didn't want them always struggling every time they pulled out one of the games. Um, and then I don't even remember which ones came with the curriculum and which ones didn't. I know the Goblet and Gobblers comes with one of the younger grades. Um, we also did the Anomia Kids, which is supposed to be a word development, I believe. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, it's readers. It has to do with reading and words, and you have to, I don't know, we haven't even opened it yet, but it does, it's an educational reading and words. That's all I know. And then we also got the Storytellers card game, which I'm sure is going to be really fun. Um, but I have a feeling it's going to be telling stories um, of some sort. And so I'm really looking forward to what that will be because I like playing games with the kids and anything that we can do that is um, fun, hands-on, and they're learning, I'm all for. So that kind of, I don't know if that was too much, too little. Um, it kind of gives you a run of what just fourth and fifth grade looks like. But the lower grades, you still have every subject. You just have um, some more hands-on, um, but you still, I mean, there's pretty much a, something for everyone. Um, as is the case every time we do one of these, I'm ready to kick everything I have to the curb and start over again. <laughs> um, two questions for you. One, yeah. Timberdoodle does K through 12? Yes. Okay. And, um, I love this concept of being able to mix and match at different levels for your kid. I mean, most kids, I, I think just the idea of like, here's fourth grade and you should be just at this level for everything. A lot of us don't experience that. They're all over the place. Is there any kind of assessment tool at Timberdoodle to help you figure out which pieces um, you might need to sub out? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it depends on what you're looking at. The staff has been amazing to help me. Um, I look at a lot of things are la labeled with an age range. So if I know my kids, I look at the age range and go, oh, we're gonna, that's gonna be too hard because like last year, still eight to adult was kind of hard. Um, you know, when it said eight to adult, so I was, you know, leaning more towards the six and seven to adult or six and seven to 12. Whereas this year I did get a couple of the eight to adult and knowing that because some of those higher level thinking skills in those games, they're games, but they're hard. <laughs> and I, I don't want them frustrating out. So you kind of have to kind of wait and see what your, you know, know what your kids are. I know on the math, some of the math curriculums do have their own um, it'll, they'll tell you, oh, go to this website and the people at Timberdoodle can tell you, they'll tell you, oh, go to this website and this curriculum has an online um, placement. So you can do that. And then the other thing that you can do is, um, you know, just talk to the staff and say, okay, here's where my kids are. I'd like to teach them together. Um, which of these items would be the best? And what I love is that because it's a range on a lot of things, like the Mostos or Mosdos, whatever you want to call it. Um, I use that together. I only do one language. We do the stuff together because the questions, the stories do get longer and they get a little bit more in depth and they add more vocabulary, but you can easily do, like I have one of my providers that comes to my house and she'll listen to the stories and she's like, oh my goodness, this is the best, these are the best stories. And so even, I mean, I, I love reading them. So they're good for all different age groups. So you can just pick something that's similar. So if you have a third grade and they're working at third grade and you've got a fifth grader, well, maybe you're gonna choose for that language, choose fourth grade, choose right in the middle between the two, it will be perfectly fine. So that's kind of, you know, you kind of wanna to gear to figure out, okay, what's, 
if I have a couple of kids and they're fairly close in age, how can I use the majority of the stuff to meet everybody's needs? And that's kind of what I do. Um, obviously some subjects you can't, you have to separate, but a lot of it, you can easily do it together for, you know, like the two years of world history, everybody can do two years of world history together or, you know, and some things you will have to do it by grade level or figure out what works for your kids, but they're great about helping. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Does anybody have any other questions while Kim is here? I know that she would be happy to answer questions later yeah. if anything <laughs> pops up. Um, but if you have anything else, right now is your time to pop up either in chat or just by taking yourself off of mute. Is there anything that I didn't say that I should have said or I didn't cover? I don't think so. It was so good. And now I'm going to be Other than me there. dropping my phone and, you know, getting me a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing, not, don't worry about this. It was not backwards to us. So it may have looked oh, backwards on okay. your phone screen, but it was fine for us. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, your tour gave me some ideas of stuff for my family to supplement what we've been doing. I said to Kim as we started that I was excited about this because um, I feel like that I really like the curriculum that we use. But as Kim mentioned, when um, you get to uh, certain grade levels, they take out a lot of the hands-on stuff, and I'm looking for adding in that hands-on stuff. And I took a bunch of notes as you went through yours for me to go and check out. So I'm really thankful for it. Well, and what's really awesome is that you can um, go to their website or get a catalog, whatever's easiest for you. Go to their website, and you can click on grade level, or you can click on it by subject, and they have everything from science, STEM. Um, arts and crafts. And so you can go, okay, we need arts and crafts. What do you have? Or I have this budding engineer and nobody, most curriculums just don't kind of hit that engineering side at all. A lot of the electronics and the robots and the coding, and they have a ton of stuff for that. So if you have a child that has a certain interest, they probably have it there. Um, and that's what's really awesome. Yeah. Um, Jessica put in chat, I love the idea for supplementing what we're using. My kiddo would love the graphic history novels. And I agree, yeah. we found, um, uh, I don't know who they're published by, we found them at Goodwill, but we're doing American history as well. And we found a set of graphic novels that are the Sons of Liberty set in oh, graphic awesome. novel. And it's really great. So seeing that there are more like that out there and then yeah. drawing your own. One thing that they did, I think it was like third grade level, maybe, and I don't know if they're still doing it, but they had um, the Roadrunner and Coyote Science, and it was awesome. So my kids and I had to go back because my kids are like, who's the coyote and who's the Roadrunner? I'm like, okay, we need an education. So we had to go find the old cartoons and go watch Beep Beep. But it was awesome because it was all based on, it was physics based and it was on levers and weights and motion and force and, you know, what could really happen and what wasn't right. And it was awesome. My kids loved it because it was, and it was all done in cartoon form, but it, there was so much learning that happened. That's terrific. All right. Megan um, in chat also said, yes, thank you for all of the information. Um, so if nobody else has uh, questions to pop up, then I am just going to give you a giant thanks, Kim. This was so great. And uh, I'm going to be spending part of my afternoon on Timberdoodle, looking around <laughs> for stuff for us. So I'm so thankful that you volunteered to do this. And it's been really, really helpful. And I will get the recording up on the YouTube channel as soon as I can. Awesome. Thank you so much. Right. If anybody Thank has you. questions, just, just let me know. Will do. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye.